in Shanghai and I'm speaking with Dr. Shen. He's the director at China Telecom's Shanghai Research Institute. Now, Dr. Shen, what kind of broadband technologies has China Telecom deployed so far? Is it a mixture of DSL and fiber access? Yeah, uh, before 2007, uh, in China, the DSL is the main technology for the access network. And uh, in 2007, uh, the spring of the 2007, uh, we do a evaluation test uh, uh, for the EPON technology, and uh, we achieved the uh, large-scale all-round interoperability between different uh, system vendor and uh, chipset vendor. So we think that uh, the EPON technology is mature enough. So uh, at the second. Uh, as the second half of the 2007, China Telecom began the EPON deployment uh, in many provinces. So I think uh, after, several, uh, after several years uh, deployment, uh, I think uh, currently the EPON and the GPON can uh, is begin to take the place of the DSL technology. So I think uh, it's a mix of the DSL and the PON technology. Uh, but I think in the future, the most uh, sub subscribers will be uh, will, will use the te uh, pound technology as a fixed line broadband access technology. Yeah. Now, what kind of advantages do you think that fiber broadband access will deliver to your customers, but also to China Telecom? Yeah, uh, it uh, it's obvious that the fiber access system can provide a. Uh, uh, larger bandwidth and uh, uh, better transmission quality and uh, longer reach and uh, better QoS guarantee. So China Telecom think uh, fiber access, uh, for example, the PON technology is a, a future-proof technology for the access network evolution. You know, in China, uh, the new policy about the three network convergence uh, released uh, in the last year, and uh, we will um, we have to cooperate with other operators. So we think uh, we we do uh, we can maintain our uh, competition uh, in the future uh, three network convergence epoch. And how does the operation and management of a fiber access broadband network differ from the DSL, the, the copper-based broadband? I mean, is it more simple? Is it more cost efficient? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, the difference is very significant because the uh, uh, migration from the DSL to the fiber access technology is, uh, I think, is a, a revolution, not a, just a renovation because the, the medium, the transmission media changed and the system architecture changed. And so I think for the operation of the network, it's also different, it, uh, different uh, uh, significantly. Uh, the, first, uh, 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 the first is that the, the uh, ODN, the optical uh, distribution network, uh, install installation and the operation is different from that uh, DSL because the fiber has a um, uh, higher requirements for the uh, uh, installation and uh, the uh, we must use some special tools to do the fiber laying and uh, uh, for example we, for DSL it's very easy just uh, put the the the, the copper line. Uh, Coupler is okay, but for the fiber, we must uh, guarantee the quality of the connection and of the fiber, and uh, we must use some, for example, the fusion splicer and the other tools to to make the quality, guarantee the quality of the uh, fiber loop. And uh, the I think the second is uh, is uh, uh, some special technology should be used to to do the uh, fiber loop. Uh, performance uh, measurement and the diagnosis. Uh, for example, we need to measurement the, the optical power loss in the, uh, in the whole loop, and uh, we must uh, take some technology, for example, the OTDR and uh, uh, dual, dual and uh, um, optical power uh, measurement and to do some, uh, <coughs> to, to test the uh, quality of the, of the optical loop. China Telecom have deployed the uh, 
uh, RSSI based um, dual end uh, optical power measurement uh, technology to do the, and uh, and we also use some artificial uh, intelligence to do some uh, optical loop uh, diagnosis. It help us very effectively. And uh, the third uh, is that the um, the the pawn system, the fiber access network, is a multiple service platform. He provides many services, for example, the uh, high speed internet uh, access and IPTV and, and other value add service. So, for the multi service system, it's difficult uh, to, to, to operate uh, the system. Now, once you have these fiber based broadband networks and these multiple services, what are the business models for actually growing the average revenue per user from the people that are using these services? The high bandwidth of fiber access net system make it possible to deliver more services to subscribers. So the, but in the uh, in the DSL system, because the, due to the bandwidth limitation, uh, for example, the IPTV and I, any other high bandwidth service cannot be delivered. But for in the fiber access system, uh, the operator can deliver uh, more uh, service. Uh, for example, the high definition IPTV and uh, voice over IP and other uh, value added service. How important does China Telecom believe that the deployment of fiber broadband is to the Chinese economy? Uh, you know, the broadband network is an important uh, telecom infrastructure for the whole country and uh, the fiber access network uh, upgrade will improve the level of the telecom infrastructure of the China, of China and uh, uh, accelerate the uh, economy development and uh, improve the efficiency and the quality of the economy development. Uh, everyone will benefit from the uh, fiber access network uh, uh, building. And uh, on the other hand, uh, uh, I think the uh, fiber access network upgrade uh, will give some uh, employment uh, opportunity for the country. Uh, according to a statistic of the uh, USA, uh, uh, the uh, one percentage point of the broadband penetration increase will, uh, will uh, give them about uh, uh, 300,000 uh, employment uh, uh, for the country. I think the same situation will happen for China. And on that very positive note, Dr. Shen, thank you very much. Thank you.